My name is Caitlin. I am a dietitian from Coastline Elderly. Okay, and this we're hosting this event from Coastline. And today I'm going to be talking to you about something that we don't really hear a lot about. Uh, it's about malnutrition. So, and to begin, we're going to start with a little bit of trivia. I normally like to start with some kind of uh, something to introduce the topic. The first one: Do they have a Fourth of July in England? No. What do you think? No. Yes, they of course have a fourth, a July 4th in the calendar in England, right? Some months have 31 days. How many have 28? All of them have 28 days. <laughs> All of them do. Last one, last trivia. Yeah, last trivia. If there, if there are three apples and you take two away, how many do you have? You have two because you took them away. Okay? All right? These are a little bit tricky. They're actually from a test that um, there's about, I think, 10 questions on it. And it's believed that Bill Gates took it and he, got, he scored a three. So they're brain teasers. The reason I wanted to introduce this, is introduce with this, uh, this little trivia, is that things aren't always as we immediately perceive them. Okay, we can, like the 4th of July, my immediate answer was no. And once you actually take a second to think about it, process a little bit more, of course they have a 4th of July. How else would they get to the 5th of July? Right, yeah. So that's kind of like malnutrition. It can be present in yourself or some people you know, you're, you spend time with, and you might not even recognize it as malnutrition. You might think of it as, oh, they just have a bad appetite, or, or they're not really eating as much today, or something like that. So um, today, and actually the rest of this week, Coastline is um, going to be hosting these malnutrition clinics, okay, um, to help build awareness so that we can start recognizing it and understanding where to go and who to look to uh, for some help. Okay, uh, malnutrition by definition is a physical state of imbalanced nutrition. Put simply, it's just too much or too little nutrition, okay? A lot of us think of nutrition, uh, malnutrition as undernourished, right? We think of malnutrition and we might picture somebody who's what we consider frail. Maybe they, they might seem underweight, they don't have a lot of energy. That's true. That's the um, one, one end of the scale. That's under nutrition. On the under end of the scale, on the other end of the scale, we have those who are actually may present as a healthy weight or maybe even overweight, but they're getting too many calories but not enough of the nutritious food, so they're lacking nutrition. Okay? So that's one that's really hard to identify is when somebody is a healthy weight or a slightly overweight and they are actually malnourished, okay? So you can be under or over nourished and be considered malnourished, okay? So why is this a concern? Why should we be worried about malnutrition? Well, it's a global problem, currently affecting just under 50 million older adults age 65 and older. So that's 15% of the American population uh, is at, is at risk for malnutrition, okay? Currently, those of us who, um, those individuals who, are, um, who receive home care, malnutrition affects 13 to 21 percent of them. Individuals in the hospital, or older adults, uh, 30, 30 to 55 percent are at risk for malnu malnutrition. When you're malnourished, you're more likely to get infections, uh, you're more likely to fall more, you might be um, uh, asked to stay in the hospital longer. You have a harder time recovering because your body is already weakened and it's not, it's not receiving 100% of what it needs. Okay? So if you think of maybe when you get sick, you lose your appetite, maybe you, you end up with a, di some, a diagnosis that you end up having to go to the hospital. Maybe you're malnourished because you haven't been eating, you start to lose weight in the hospital, and then it kind of spirals. Maybe you go home, Maybe you fall, you end up back in the hospital. It's kind of this cycle. So we really want to raise awareness and understand for those of us as individuals or those that we care about can get help to prevent malnutrition. So some of the factors here can put us at risk. 
We know with age, our appetite changes, our taste changes, so that can impact how much we eat, how often we eat. If we start to lose weight, or if we, if we have a low weight to begin with, and then as we age and we start to lose an appetite, and you start to lose weight when you, you're not really trying, that can put you at risk for malnutrition too. Okay? It's suggestive that there's inadequate nutrition. If you take this even further, as you lose weight and you, this um, risk for malnutrition progresses, you can start to lose muscle, muscle mass and fat. That's where it starts to, you start to really get um, into a risky um, progression. Okay? When you start to lose that muscle mass and fat, you're, um, you're, at, you're at higher risk for... Um, and something that is, is a uh, major contributing factor for malnutrition is just not being able to get enough healthy food. We know getting to the store can be challenging if you don't have transportation or maybe you um, don't want to ask somebody for a ride to the store. Carrying groceries is another issue, right? For some of us, you start to lose that strength. Preparing food, it's a lot of, it's a lot, it exerts a lot of energy. And maybe you're only cooking for one, so you tend to hold back, right? You don't really want to prepare too much. You don't want to buy too much. You don't want to waste. You don't want to overcook. And so there's all these things that come along with um, the changes in the older, uh, as we get older, that can increase our risk for not getting enough food. So these are common signs of malnutrition. They're, they are kind of separate from risk factors. They go hand in hand. So if you're at risk for malnutrition and you're noticing some of these signs, maybe yourself or, or someone you, you care about, if these are all kind of present together, they really might be at risk. So that's when you want to take note. So some of this, the signs of malnutrition are mood changes, depression, uh, feeling really tired, really having that lack of energy. Individuals who are isolated, not socializing, you're all do it, you're all, you know, you're here, so that's great. Socialization is key too. Okay, it's not um, solely about um, how much we eat, but also the socialization has a uh, plays a, a factor as well. Being overweight, as we discussed, you can be overweight and be malnourished, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Multiple chronic diseases or if you're on t uh, taking multiple different medications, that can impact the, nu the nutrients that we consume and absorb in the way that they act in our body. Maybe you have to limit a lot of foods. Disordered eating, this is actually, a, um, an, can be an issue with older adults. Problems with memory, maybe forgetting to eat, forgetting what you ate, okay? Um, and drinking alcohol and drinks high in sugar. And that's because you're, you're consuming those calories, but you're missing opportunities to get nutrients. All right, so what to do when somebody's malnourished? You want to let either that individual's family member or caregiver know so that they can speak to the individual's provider, healthcare provider. The healthcare provider can then step in and do a more in-depth assessment and offer recommendations that is going to help this individual that you care about. Some of the recommendations may be including, may include visiting a dietitian where we can offer nutrition counseling, finding ways to boost calories, boost protein, um, finding modes of exercise that might be helpful for the individual. Nutrition supplements, those would be more um, a discussion with the provider as well. But somebody who, may, who is at risk for malnourished or is malnourished might need those, that, extra that extra nutrition to kind of get back to um, a state of neutral. Um, home delivered meals, right? <laughs> meals on wheels can help cut back the, the concerns that come from preparing a meal, shopping for a meal. There's that one meal a day that you don't have to worry about or this individual that you're, you're worried about. Referrals to food stamps, so <coughs> SNAP, now we know um, food stamps is referred to as SNAP, and other assist assistance if needed. <coughs> the individuals who get involved will help find whatever is needed for that person, okay? Many seniors are afraid to discuss malnutrition and, and believe, oh, I really think my neighbor is malnourished, but I, I'm worried about having that discussion with them because there's, there's a little bit of a, a fear around it. What's gonna happen if, if I'm found malnourished? What, where, what's gonna happen to me? But it's really, it's really important to start talking about it as soon as you might detect it so that it doesn't get um, worse. So um, 
Malnutrition Awareness Week is an official um, event hosted, uh, hold on. It's from the American Society for Parental and Enteral Nutrition, also known as ASPEN. It's the official Malnutrition Awareness Week. They celebrate it in September. And you might see this graphic, maybe you've seen it before, maybe last September. Maybe you'll see it again this September. And it identifies five main criteria that you might notice in somebody or maybe yourself and it might get you to start thinking about malnutrition. Unplanned weight loss. If you're losing weight and you really don't know why and you're not intending to, loss of appetite as we discussed, if you're just not eating as much as you used to or as often, not able to eat or only able to eat small amounts, kind of the same, feeling really weak or tired, that can contribute, it can all snowball together. And swelling or fluid accumulation. That has to do with the lack of protein. The body tries to find a balance of fluid, so that's where some um, swelling can actually suggest malnutrition. So again, we want to prevent it from happening so that we stay well nourished in the event that we, um, to prevent anything from worsening. Some ways to prevent malnutrition are to get daily exercise. Exercise actually encourages our appetite. It can, um, <laughs> sorry, I just lost my thought. Um, oh and of course, if we're, at, if we're eating adequately and uh, satisfying our muscles and our bones, um, that's going to promote good, um, good health overall. And some of you might have come to uh, some of the discussions we've been going over for a few months, and we talk about different or, um, systems of the body, and it's so important to think about the body as a whole, right? Our bones, our muscles, our brain, our heart, our lungs, okay? Eating regularly. This is a huge discussion um, that we, see, we talk about. I just don't have an appetite. I'm not really eating as much. Set an alarm or set a schedule. I've been in homes where there are signs in certain rooms that say, don't forget to eat, and it's really just a reminder, okay, so that you don't miss, you don't miss out on a meal. When you do eat, if it's a meal or a snack, try to aim for three food groups in each meal. That's gonna help give you a really good balance. Right? And keep things simple. It doesn't have to be a full, full on cooked meal. It can be something very simple. Right? Who can think of a meal or snack idea that incorporates a fruit, a starch, and a protein? Very simple. No one? Okay. I'll, here's one. A peanut butter and banana sandwich. Okay, it's that easy. Okay, barely any cooking. You've got protein from your peanut butter, you've got the banana, and you've got your starch as the bread. Recommend whole grain, but if your means are that you prefer white, that's fine too, okay? But it's that simple. Now, how many of you remember the food pyramid? Okay, the food pyramid went away a few years ago, and it's been replaced by this image of a plate. It's referred to as my plate. Tufts created this one specifically for the needs of older adults. And maybe you've seen it. If not, um, you do have one in your packet today. It's just to represent how to balance your plate. And when we say aim for three food groups in your meal or snack, try to follow that visual where you have something fr at le uh, from each of the food groups. Okay. Just to go a little bit more in depth about the foods to help prevent malnutrition is making sure that you're getting as much food, um, as much nutrition in the food that you're eating as possible. You want every bang for your bite. Okay, so when it comes to fruits and vegetables, you want half your plate, if you can, to be fruit and or vegetable. As you see on that little image, half the plate is fruit or vegetable. Dried fruit provide our, a large amount of nutrients in small quantities. That's why we've handed those out today. As it relates to malnutrition, they are much higher in calorie than a fresh or canned or a frozen, but you're still getting other vitamins and nutrients in them, okay? So we, when you bring those home, we're gonna incorporate them in the yogurt bar or some of those foods in the yogurt bar. It's just an idea to give you for when you go home, you know how to incorporate some of these foods. But fruits and vegetables in general provide us with a whole range of vitamins, minerals. Some do have protein, some have a lot, they have fiber. And maybe you're familiar with the phrase, eat the colors of the rainbow. That's going to give you the, the, most, the most nutrition 
you know, you get all those different colors, and they're all providing different levels of vitamins. Okay, so try to eat as many different colors as you can. And stay within your means of your personal preference, your individual, um, your budget, fresh, frozen, and canned, all good. Protein is a key player. It uh, supports recovery and repair. It maintains our muscle mass that we really don't want to lose. And protein foods are often higher in calorie. Okay, so our protein foods are our meats, our fish, our eggs, but also nuts, beans, and seeds, <coughs> and lentils. We have lentils up here. You want the quarter, a quarter of your plate to be protein. So you have half of it fr uh, fruit and vegetable, a quarter protein, and then uh, a quarter grain, which we're going to walk right into. Okay, and the starches, the quarter, the final quarter of your plate. If you can, try to have it as a quarter of your plate. And we recommend whole grains because you do get more nutrition for each bite. Um, so bre uh, breads, rice, pastas, potatoes are on there. They don't, they're not whole grain, but uh, they are our starches. They are a great source of starch. So here are some other nutritious snack ideas. Nuts, very high in protein, high calorie. Dried fruits, same thing, a little bit higher in calorie. Good, uh, great fiber, good, usually good in iron. You can make a trail mix of, of your own favorite fruits and dried fruits and uh, nuts. Nut butter, peanut butter, almond butter. We recommend those very, very often to individuals who are losing weight because it's so high calorie. It's got healthy fat. It's good for, good for the heart. And you can put it on so many different things. Toast, crackers, you can put it in a smoothie. You could have it just with fruit by itself. Okay, cheese and crackers. Cheese, again, it's dairy, so it's a little bit higher in calorie, high fat. Yogurt with dried fruit, granola, or cereal. That's what we're going to be practicing with today after the presentation. We're going to have a yogurt bar. Hard-boiled eggs, very simple to prepare. Um, good source of protein, cottage cheese with fruit, oatmeal and banana, hummus, yogurt, uh, hummus, yogurt dip, or guacamole. So these are just really, really nutritious um, ideas for snacks. All right. So when we're, if you're concerned about malnutrition, it's important to screen for it. And we're going to be practicing that today. There's, uh, we have two different tools. Uh, there's actually several different tools for malnutrition. For today, we're going to be focusing on one and maybe two if you're interested. So the first one is the malnutrition screening tool, the MST. It's that green sheet you have. This is uh, a very simple questionnaire. It's got two questions. Okay? And then it rates whether or not you're at risk. It's a very general risk <laughs> score. But it's a validated tool. The second is the frail scale. We, don't, we didn't pass this one out because it's a little bit longer in detail. So if you're interested and you'd like to know if you're, um, if you're on the frail scale, Stephanie or I will, um, you can come up to us and we'll go through it individually afterwards. Okay? But it's very, if, you, if you are screened for malnutrition, you're found at risk. It's very important to follow up with your, with your provider because we don't want this to progress. We're just encouraging you to think about malnutrition. Um, and if you have questions or if you um, are concerned about somebody, uh, just reach out either to their family member or friend. You could reach out to Coastline. Okay. Um, you could call Coastline and ask for either the nutrition program or ask to speak with the, one of the dietitians, Stephanie or myself. And we can um, help you out. So if you, um, if you scored a zero, that's good. You're not at risk for malnutrition. Um, if you did score something and maybe you don't want to um, share it, but you're concerned, you can always call us. Yeah.